Hello, family. We're thankful to share this update on our process of reimagination and reentry to the building at New Hope. And this past week, the team had a very successful conversation, the results of which have been the survey which has been emailed to your inboxes in these past few days. We invite and encourage you to please complete this survey and return it to us by the end of the week that we may tabulate those results in advance of our June 5th meeting with Mrs. Sean DeBerry Johnson, wherein we'll talk together about protocol and procedures for our phased plan of re-entering and reimagining ministry in the building at New Hope. Likewise, we will be sending that same survey by letter mail to those who do not have email access and the elders of our fellowship. If you are in need of a hard copy by mail, please contact the church office at your earliest convenience, leave a voicemail message, and we'll be certain that you get a copy of that survey in the mail. God bless you. Thank you. And we look forward to sharing together on June 5th as we study together about re-entering and reimagining ministry at New Hope Baptist Church. God bless you. family and friends, we are grateful for another opportunity for worship together. We're grateful for this Memorial Day holiday weekend worship experience. We can come together and celebrate the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, to lift up the names of those that God has called to be with him and to take an opportunity to thank God for one more day together. We praise God for you. We invite you to open up your mouth, to raise your hands to, in praise, to lift up the songs of goodness in God today and take just this time to celebrate God together with us. We welcome you to worship with New Hope Baptist Church. Good morning, New Hope. Now is an opportunity for us to come together in scripture. The word of the Lord comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter, verses 36 through 41. And the NIV reads, Therefore, let all of the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, and the sayers of his holy word.
We're grateful, New Hope family, as the spring arrives, as God allows us to see blossoms bloom and buds to open, birds to sing in the trees, the sun to rise high in the sky and the temperatures rise. We thank God and are reminded of how much God has given to us. Every breath of air we breathe, every new day we see, every wonderful reminder of spring has come from the hand of our God. So I would invite you to join me today as we return to God who's given so much to us. Won't you give today as God has blessed you through the many means that God has blessed us to be able to return our tithes and our offerings. You can give through our online giving app, givelify.com, the New Hope Church website at newhopechurchdenver.org on the give page. You can also mail in your tithe to the church office, or you can contact a member of our finance committee who will gladly come and retrieve your tithe for you. We thank God for your, for your faithful giving to the Lord here at New Hope. New Hope family and friends, we take this moment today in giving God thanks, honor, and praise and taking this opportunity to reflect on, to think together about, to share as a fellowship, a faith family, the hearts uh, of all of us as we remember those who God's called home to glory to be with him. I would invite you right now to take this moment as we share together the names of those who God's called to be with him across the family of this fellowship, extended family members and immediate family, individuals that all of us consider beloved. Won't you take this time together in prayerful meditation, in thoughtful reflection, as we consider those that God has called home to glory, think about the goodness they poured into our lives, the memories that we'll share of them and hold dear, and how God has made a place in heaven for them. God bless you, family, as we share together. The Word of God comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, and it reads thus, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, understanding of his holy word. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Lord, we come to you as humbly as we know how, with thanksgiving in our hearts. For you, Lord, your love, grace, and mercy, that you have shown us your precious children of God. We thank you. Lord, on this memorial worship and remembrance service, we come first praying for our veterans who are on active duty here and overseas, risking their lives to protect our great country and the freedom we enjoy because of their sacrifices. We also pray for the bereaved families of the veterans who have paid the supreme sacrifice of dying for this country. We remember them. Today, we remember with sadness first the bereaved members of New Hope Baptist Church who have lost loved ones over the time since our last memorial bereavement service over a year ago. Not only in Colorado, but across the nation, east and west, north and south. Sometimes members were not able to travel to where their loved ones passed due to the horrible pandemic which has prevented our bereaved members in so many cases from being able to say goodbye to a loved one who the Lord has called home to glory. Yes, it, it has been difficult, Lord, but Lord, we take great comfort in knowing that our loved ones who have been called home to glory are in your precious care, Lord, because of their belief in you, Lord, as the Son of the living God, Jesus, the resurrected Christ. And Lord, we not only remember relatives of members, but members of New Hope Baptist Church who have also passed away, our friends who we look forward to seeing at church on Sunday morning, looking forward to talking to them and giving each other a hug of loving kindness to each other. Yes, Lord, we remember, but we also know that someday each of us will be called home to be with you, Lord, and we all pray, dear Lord Jesus, that you will take each of us as you have our loved ones who have gone before us. Take us into your loving arms and say, job well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my eternal joy of peace and happiness. This we pray to the glory of God the Father. Through the Son and through the Holy Spirit, we pray, we pray, we pray and give thanks. Boy, hallelujah. Amen and amen. cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord the Lord which made heaven and earth he said he will not suffer thy foot thy foot to be moved the Lord which keepeth thee he will not slumber nor sleep, for the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. No, the sun shall not 
light thee by day, now the moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul, even forevermore. Oh,
Bible family, I invite you to turn with me once again to that wonderful book of the Acts, chapter 2, the Acts of the Apostles. I just want to reiterate a couple of verses there for you here. Acts chapter 2, verses 37 and 38. It says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for this marvelous privilege, O oh God, to declare again and to share your holy word. We pray, O oh God, right now in the matchless name of Jesus, that you, God, would take the words of this, your humble under-shepherd, O oh Lord, and that you would, O oh God, connect the hearts of the waiting congregation, that together, wherever we might be streaming today, O oh God, whichever way we may be receiving this word, that, God, it might find a resting place in our hearts, and that, God, it might draw us closer to you, that our lives may be lived in ways that give you glory and lead us to victory. It's in the majestic name of Jesus we pray, and all God's people say together, amen and amen. I'll be preaching today from this subject, not going back to normal. Amen? Not going back to normal. During the heavier months of the pandemic, poet activist Sonia Renee Taylor penned words so powerful that they crossed the globe and led to the authorship of a new book between Sister Taylor and writer Brene Brown. Sister Taylor's words were these. She said, we will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal, other than we normalized greed, inequity, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, and lack. We should not long to return, my friends. She said, we are being given the opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity and nature. Her prose underscores the extraordinary health inequities, wage and wealth gaps, disproportionate impact of crisis on marginalized communities and historic hate crimes we were, a we were all still enough to see. The poet activist was eloquently explaining, I'm not going back to normal. And while Apostle Peter hasn't penned a poem in this text, he didn't miss any prose articulating atrocities around him with eloquence when he said, This Jesus you crucified. Peter was praising the wickedness and imposed agony that were normal in New Testament Jerusalem. When he advised them to repent and be baptized, Peter wasn't speaking to the unchurched in need of salvation because the text says he was talking with fellow Israelites. He was reminding those who already knew of God that there was a normal that was not in the interest of God in their lives. Peter reminded them their nation had unseated God-ordained leaders, corrupted the temple, and put prophets to the sword. Not to mention crucifixion was so common in New Testament Jerusalem that there were already two thieves waiting to die of the same fate when Jesus showed up. Numbed by hearing their normal, everyone standing around asked, what must we do? Is there anyone who can confess today, if you don't mind, I'm just going to put the kickstand down for a second, that many times you and I could get back on track if we just admit that we don't know and ask God, what must I do? Any real Christians who confess today that your cycles of payday to debt, of boot up to black numbers, and good health to emergency rooms would have been a whole lot different in life had you just asked God, what must I do? If you're not ashamed, you ought to take 30 seconds right here and now and consider some things from this pandemic season that no longer deserve welcome in your life. Then declare, decide, and decree, I'm not going back to normal. As a matter of fact, you ought to turn to your neighbor, and if you're by yourself, you ought to simply raise your voice to God and declare and mean it in your heart. God, I know there's some stuff I've been carrying that I'm not going back to, and if, Lord, you help me get from here to there, I promise you, I'm not going back to normal. Can I get a few witnesses who will testify that you looked up and realized that God's been too good to you, brought you through too much over too many things for you to turn around and go back where you came from and you're willing to testify out loud, I'm not going back. Yes, it will take work. Yes, you may slip and fall as you go, but we affirm together, greater is God that is in you than the enemy that's in the world. Not going back to normal. 
As in Acts 2, our conviction should carry us out of normal. If not, if we don't do any better than we were when this whole thing started, then we're no better than Fortune 500 companies launching D&I efforts so shareholders can assuage their grief. If not, we're no better than local police departments firing individuals for protecting systems that keep killing unarmed black and brown people while good, good hardworking officers bear their shame. That's our normal. The EPA found uh, black communities are historically more exposed to heat islands, flood-prone areas, worse water, and poorer air quality. That's our normal. From 2017 to 2019, race was the mid predominating factor in 60% of all hate crimes. That's our normal. Here in 2021, the largest global retailer, uh, Amazon, on the seventh incident of finding a noose on the same construction site after the seventh time stopped and said maybe we ought to say something that's our normal ask me friends why should we go back to that i don't know about anybody else but i'm not interested in going back to normal as a matter of fact since we're talking about not going back to normal the church has some normal we need to need out as well considering all we lost through the pandemic and all it gave us opportunity to understand about ourselves hopefully the christian church is poised for an answer to the question from god what must we do that you and i have work to do in the house of god that all across the country we've seen a a, a, a collective uh, walking away from organized religion a, a, a minimizing a second rung on the ladder of faith in the house of God. And so it's clear to us, family, that long before COVID-19 showed up, there was a normal in this nation that said, I may or may not belong to anybody's church. I might or might not sit in anybody's worship. I may or may not read my Bible in the week, lift a prayer, give an offering to anybody, or call on God. And, and if I don't, it's all right, because that's our normal. These apostles were cut to the heart, the scripture says, and asked, what must we do? The apostles' word means they were ready, they, they were prepared, they had decided in their minds that they had to do something to move from where they were to where God needed them to be. And so in deference to simply repeating what we've always done or reinstating our old methods and practices, these apostles help us to understand they were ready to imagine something new. They decided by asking the question, what must we do? Matter of fact, family, they tell us not only were they ready to take action they were ready to do so together they say what must we do in other words every heart and mind who had to be on one accord every soul had to be moving in the same direction no we don't need any cookie cutter images all of us have a unique being gifts and abilities but if we're going to get to where God has called us to be if we're going to avoid going back to the mess we came from in this world then you and I must ask together what must we do we got to move together children run on on to see what the end will be and testify right here and now today you ought to open your mouth and declare without any shame don't worry about what anybody got to say about where you came from what you used to do or what you struggled with as though as you open your mouth and testify God hears in glory and will send angels by your side if you simply shout out loud I'm not going back to normal that God is able to do all things well and that includes leading us from where we were to where God's called us to be. So we're not going back to normal. And since we're not family, there's a few things we got to do. The text teaches us that if we're not going back to normal, we have to be in the business of offering what we believe absent. In the 40th verse, Peter's word to his listeners was, save yourselves. This save, this word form of save is not that of salvation, which would be sozo in the Greek, but rather it is that of safety, which is sothete. It means to keep safe. Peter was offering the crowd mortal safety from the cruel and corrupt ways of New Testament Jerusalem. 
And if nothing else for us today, right here and now, it's clear in 2021 in every city in America that people need mortal safety. That men, women, and children need to know that they can make it from where they are to where they're going and be back home safe on, in the day. People need to know that, that we'll, we'll be all right mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and otherwise. That they need to know that they won't be accosted or harassed or, or the victim of some heinous crime just going to work to pick up a check or to attend a uh, 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 to, to attend a meeting at the shop. We need to be able to know we're going to be all right. And it seems like to me, if nowhere else, that ought to be found in the church. That it ought to be so, family, that people can count on the church to be a place of safety. A place where we believe in offering what's absent. So even though the church of God is often known for talking about what's wrong, we need to get more about the business of celebrating what's right. That we need to help folks who are hurting. We need to reach out to people who feel lonely. We need to step in when everybody else has walked away from somebody and declare we are the people of the Most High God and we've come to provide and offer whatever is absent. That we have to be willing to be the hands and feet of Christ, the one who said to others, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to see again? And, and, and then offered what he saw to be absent. Is there anybody right here who's not ashamed to testify? That's how you made your way to church one day. That's how you met the Lord. That's how you gave Christ your life. Because somebody met you and said, baby, you all right? You said, no, I ain't. They wrapped their arms around you, called on the name of Jesus and said, baby, the Lord got you in his hand. That they decided instead of talking about what you didn't have they'd offer what was absent and you and I if we're going to move on right now family if we're going to press forward new hope we got to get about the work of offering what we believe absent so that means that when we see Gen Z MIA from the church we need to offer opportunity for Gen Z to make its way back it means when we declare parent, working parents are too busy to, to show up and bring their child and get discipled themselves, it might mean we need a working parent ministry. When we decide, family, or that folks, they mix up the football game with the worship service, that might mean we need to plant some worship in places where people are. That's what the gospel shows us throughout the New Testament report, that Jesus was never afraid to provide what was missing. The Lord showed up where the people were. He taught many he preached the gospel. He healed and raised up folks right where they were because he realized and believed in offering what was absent. Reminds me of the wonderful blessing of ministry that we shared some years back at New Hope. It happened on the occasion of leaving the sanctuary on several Sundays in a row. And uh, upon preparing to depart, some of us who had lingered around the building after worship continue to encounter the same family each Sunday when everybody was gone. We began to wonder how is it that this family loves the church so much they hear until the last car leaves a lot. After some weeks went by, we realized not only did they like the church, not only did they linger in the lot, but they were sleeping in their car in the church parking lot. Finally, the family came to a leader and said, Sister Leader, Brother Pastor, I ain't got nowhere else to go. I've done all I can, and the only way I've got to keep my family safe is we park right here at the church, and we show up when we can, and we stay right here until it's time to go. And so we partnered with the family. We got deacons by their side. We connected them with a, a program at the rescue mission. And together we walked with that family for, on their way from insufficiency to sufficiency. They moved from a, 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 a transitional shelter to an apartment, an apartment to a condo, and a condo to a house. Oh, yeah, you ought to ask somebody. Check the story. Uh, we, we later, uh, as we walked alongside the family, Sister Girl moved from uh, getting help at the rescue mission to being the one helping at the rescue mission. Went from being the one helping at the rescue mission to working a job that was offering help to somebody else. Went from working a job offering help to somebody else to being requested for a job in another state. And now, family, every now and then, I get a postcard in the mail saying, Pastor Downing, I just want to say thank you and tell New Hope I appreciate everything they did for me. My daughter finished college. My youngest child's done high school. And the Lord has been mighty good to us. Thank you so much for offering what was absolutely 
absent in my life. There's somebody all on this stream today who can testify that you know that you got to where you are in part because people stopped looking down their nose. Somebody got tired of judging. Somebody got tired of condemning. And finally, somebody showed up and offered you what was absent in your life. You ought to just thank God right here, family, that there is a God who loves you and I so much that he's willing to offer what's absent. That no need of going back to normal. And if you and I are going to help others do the same, we have to be willing to offer what's absent. Peter said, save yourselves. By that he meant that the church has got to offer a place of safety. And not just that family. We had to offer what's absent, but then if we're going to avoid going back to normal, we got to keep ourselves from corruption. Uh, Peter says, save yourself from this corrupt generation. We got to remember that Peter's audience was church going. They were fellow Israelites. They, they knew God. And so Peter is pointing out here that, that though they knew God, uh, they were misusing the gospel for personal gain. In other words, they were going to the temple, uh, but they were, they were in the temple, but the temple wasn't in them, Jerry. They, they, they were hanging around, but they weren't hanging in. <laughs> they, they knew the language, but they didn't quite know the Lord. And so Peter said, no, no, that ain't what this is all about. He, he said, if you're going to show up here, you need to let God show up in you. And so family, you and I have to hold fast to that reality that we avoid. We keep ourselves from corruption, that we have to work and remind ourselves that we are going to avoid going back to normal. That means we're not going to be around here just to be around. We're showing up to do God's work together. A New Hope member in a meeting some weeks ago as we began conversing about oh, the joy it will be to return back to the building. Said, Pastor, I'm glad to be going back, but I don't want to go back to fulfill anybody's personal pastime. I laughed on the inside. <laughs> and they said, no, I'm going back because I want to see Jesus in action in the people. It reminded me, family, that you and I, in some ways, this whole world has put ourselves in this calamity. The how we treat the days we've been given, how we use the time God affords, because we've made some mistakes with what God's given us. And we need to take a minute before we move back to anything we believe God's called us to, to ensure that our identities are not tied to things we did, but who we are. We, we need to be sure that, that, that our identities are connected less to what our titles are and more to uh, what God wants us to become. We're not defined by roles or titles, assigned tasks or duties, but the sacrifice of him who died on the cross for you and for me. So now that we plan to return, whether serving in the sanctuary or cooking in the kitchen, preaching from the pulpit or, the, or sitting in the front pew to the back. Let's keep ourselves from using the Lord's ministry to benefit our own wants. That the people God sending can experience that anywhere. Uh, that they see it all week at work. And folks trying to get ahead by stepping over somebody else. They see it in their social clubs. People social climbing and using the, the social collateral and political capital of somebody else to get to some place they want to be. But they come to the Lord's house to experience something different. So while we plan for the building to reopen, remember we, you and I have a duty greater than the building but to ministry. And I want to pause right here and tell God thank you that though the building was closed, ministry has been open from day one. That since the pandemic began, we never stopped doing ministry. We've been feeding those without food. We've been doing justice in the streets. We've been shepherding people to thump through some of the most painful experiences of loss in their lives. We've been tithing to the community, conducting funerals in a pandemic, sending the gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth, teaching concepts from Martin King to James Cone with some of the sharpest theological minds on the planet. We're preparing to study protocols and procedure from the person who wrote the protocol for the city where we serve. And then we're going to hear from Reverend Dr. Gina Stewart, who's one of the most prolific preachers the country has to offer. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm zealous about coming back to the building, but I want to be sure that you and I are right when we get back. And we come back for the reason, not for ourselves, but to serve the God who hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So you and I have to hold on to that passage 
things. Uh, back when the pandemic started, people would c- walk up and say, Pastor, oh, we're in a pickle, or oh, we're in a jam. But it said, we can get out if we remember that scripture that says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, oh, then I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. Well, if it was relevant then, it's still relevant now. So you ought to take some time right here, family, and these next few weeks ahead and lift up that prayer for yourself. Pray that prayer in your midnight hour and remind yourself from morning to noonday that you and I ought not go back where we came from because God's got great work to do where we're going. Oh, we're not going back to normal. And family, we'll keep from going back if we keep ourselves from corruption. If we offer what we believe absent and then finally we can avoid not going back to normal if we make the most of that day that God sends. Uh, the, the scripture passage that, that pericope comes to a close as Luke begins to explain what happened on that great day. He, he talks about how Peter preached. This is the first sermon of the New Testament other than those of Jesus. Peter stands up and preaches his initial sermon. And as he comes to a close, the writer Luke narrates it and says, and about 3,000 souls were added to their number that day. It tells us, family, that Peter had admonished, encouraged, the scripture says, pleaded with the people, please don't go back to normal. Don't go back to that where we came from. And when he finishes, his word is so convincing, convicting, and connected to the will of God in his life, 3,000 souls were added, the scripture says, that day. I find it interesting that beyond enumerating those who committed their life to Christ, Luke offers that caveat saying that day. But he helped us focus rather on what happened leading up to it or or maybe qualifying what the value of 3,000 souls meant 2,000 years ago. He simply wants us to focus on on that day. That he doesn't tell us the names of those who joined. He doesn't go through what they've been through to get there. He doesn't talk about the miraculous outpouring or how folks rushed to be saved. He didn't say who raised a hand, who, what apostle came down and touched and anointed. He didn't talk about uh, what words they gave them to unite with the fellowship. He simply lifts up 3,000 were added that day. And family, it helps me understand that Luke wants you and I to make the most of whatever that day is for us. That we're off tempted to compare, but Luke didn't do that. We often like to uh, uh, revert to what happened before as we think about what will be now, but Luke didn't do that. Or we like to pull the past into the present, but Luke steered clear of that. With no means for understanding this amount, no, 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 no guide or uh, road map to be able to accurately interpret necessarily what went down in the moment of invitation as those came forward. Luke simply says 3,000 were added there. That day. It says to me, New Hope family and friends, that as we prepare to reimagine and re enter our places of connection, uh, rather than dragging what we took away with us when we left, attempting to deposit it, the former into the present, that what we ought to do is devote ourselves to making the most of that day. That whatever day it is that God gives you to reconnect with family, loved ones, and friends. Oh yes, that whenever it is that you believe that God's called you to to reinsert yourself into the purposes God has outlined and designed. That whatever you return to your office building or or, or, or your re-engagement with the things that gave you mental, physical, and spiritual wholeness and wellness. That day, you just make the most of it when it comes. That rather than trying to hit a reset switch on what used to be, I believe Luke is reminding us to celebrate, appreciate, and to thank God for what it is right now. That Sonia Renee Taylor reminds us, family, that what we thought was normal wasn't really normal anyhow. It's not normal that 600,000 people lost their lives to a respiratory virus. Ha-ha, <laughs> that ain't normal. It's not normal that Ahmaud Arbery had got shot down jogging at night. That Breonna Taylor was killed in her bed trying to sleep. That George Floyd had a man's knee on his neck that was called to protect and serve. That ain't normal. So I thank God, family, that we ain't got to go back to normal. As a matter of fact, what we can do is thank God. God for that day that whatever new day lands on you oh God 
whatever new air you breathe. Well, when you wake up and there's fresh blood in your veins, that your mind is percolating, that your limbs got a little kick left. You ought to just thank God for that day. That family, I'm grateful for that day. For what God gives us in that day, for ideas God sends, for new brain functioning, innovative ways of ministry, how to do what we used to do better for the Lord. I'm looking forward to that day. And oh family, not just that day around here. Mm -mm. I'm not just shouting about that day in the sanctuary. No, 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 no. I'm happy and excited for it. I can't wait to get through with preaching to an empty building. I, I'm looking forward to that day. Oh, when I re-engage my physical fitness routine uh, at the place where I was able to work myself out. I, I can't wait for that day when the library re, uh, begins to accept entrance again one more time. I'm excited about that day. When I get to see my grandma one more again, I, I'm looking forward to that day and I hope on you. But family, I came by to tell you as I take my seat here, uh, that if we do that day right over here, mm -hmm, uh, don't go back to normal. I believe God has a that day for you and I over there. You see, the reason we're called to not go back to normal because we're not living this life to be normal anyhow. You ought to stay with me right here. That God shaped and made us, the Bible says, in God's own image. Male and female, God made them. In other words, we ain't supposed to be normal. We're supposed to magnify and resemble that of the Most High God. So if all you're worried about is keeping up with status quo, if all we're here to do is uh, learn how to uh, be respectable and presentable, how to wear the right tie and, and, and the right silk stockings, uh, how to select the right shoe and match it with the right outfit uh, a presentation, then we might have missed the mark. If all we do, family, is teach one another how to dot the I's and cross the T's, we miss that that's normal. But you and I weren't made to go back to normal. We we're made to live our lives in such a way that when we bat our eyes the last time, we breathe our last breath, God will welcome us over there that day. That that day has significance over here, but all that day comes a crescendo over there. Can I get a witness right here? Who will thank God that if you keep on living the best you can over here, if you press not to go back to normal on this side, oh, that God will welcome you on that side. That day, family, I'm looking forward to that day. There are some folks you and I were able to reconnect with on that day. Oh, and if you think it's great being able to do something over here that's familiar, oh, you ought to just think about what God has for you over there. Oh, I'm not rushing to see Jesus, but I'm going to keep on pressing so he'll welcome me in on that day. On that day, family, I will see some folks uh, that we lost to COVID-19. Oh, yes, some loved ones, family members, and friends who breathe their last breath on an intubation tube. Oh, some loved ones, family, whose lungs uh, were incapacitated by an upper respiratory disease. Some folks, family, who we lost in nursing homes and, and, and wellness centers and hospitals who never returned back to full bodily strength. On that day, New Hope, I'll get to see Grandpa one more time. On that day, Cousin Bob, who met us here at New Hope for my installation, I'll hold his hand and grip him up one more time. On that day, on that day, friends. You'll see those that you lost and people who you weep for right now on that day. So you want to thank God, family, that you ain't got to go back to normal because you're living that you might have life again that day. Oh, yeah. You want to just thank God right here. Can I get a worshiper? who will give God honor, glory, and praise that all we've been through in these last 18 months, we don't have to live it the rest of our lives because we ain't going back to normal. We're living that we might live again on that day. There's somebody over there. Oh yeah, a cousin, an uncle, a loved one, a spouse, grandpa, grandma, neighbor, a friend, a co-worker, 
somebody whose life closed in these last 18 months, who is cheering for you that you might see them again on that great day. Oh, old folks call it the great getting up morning. The great camp meeting over there. Oh yeah, they said there'll be a great reunion over there that day. So family, oh, don't you dare go back to normal because we're not living for normal. Oh no, we're living that you and I might see Jesus that day. That on that day, oh, when we close our eyes the last time, we might open them and hear the Lord say, oh, I'm so glad you didn't go back to normal. You didn't get in the fit, but rather you decided to live your life the best you knew how. Oh yeah, to offer what was absent, to keep from corruption, oh, and to make the most of that day he gave us. The family, I thank God right here and now that we ain't got to go back to normal. Oh no, that's not our calling. But that if we keep pressing our way, we keep innovating what God has given us. Yeah. We keep seeking the do, as Paul said, forgetting what's behind us and pressing on toward the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Oh, on that day, family, oh, we'll see God face to face. And so I, I thank God for you. And I want you to know that wherever you are today, as you attend to this stream, as you open your ears, hearts and mind to what God is saying and doing. I thank God that right here and now that you and I don't have to go back to normal. You don't have to accept the normal of this world as your life's calling. Because the good news is it can be done. The Bible tells us through Christ all things are possible. He said, Pastor, you don't know how, how high my ladder is. Yeah, but God knows. He said, Pastor, you, you don't know how wide the stream I got to swim. You don't, you don't know how deep the mud puddle I stepped in. Yeah, but God knows all about it. And because God does, you and I don't have to go back to normal. That God has a future ahead for you and for me. And if you'll just embrace it, just believe it in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. That's all you got to do. The Bible says you will be saved. And so we invite you today to do just that, to take this quiet moment wherever you are as this music plays and washes over your heart, that you may just confess Christ with your mouth and accept him in your heart as Lord and Savior. Peter says it right there in the text, this, this Jesus you crucified, God has made him both, both Lord and Messiah. It means he's both the Savior of your soul and he's the Lord in charge of your life. If you just accept that today, oh, it doesn't mean tomorrow will be easy as pie, but what it does mean, whatever tomorrow brings, you don't have to do it by yourself. We invite you today to connect with us as a faith family, to contact our church office by telephone, reach us by email, direct message through any of our social media platforms, or simply place a message in the comment section of this YouTube channel stream, and we'll do our very best to ensure that you run the race of faith with God and that we run right alongside you. God bless you, family, for sharing this streaming worship experience today, and we pray God's continued blessing in your life. As you and I together, as we strive, declare together, we're not going back to you. God bless you. Now is the time in the worship service where we collectively come together in prayer. We would ask that wherever this message finds you, that if it's safe for you to do so, that you bow your heads, close your eyes, and open your heart for this word of prayer. Our country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee we think. Land where our fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. On a day like today, where we remember those who came and passed away, 
We pray to you, God, that their living was not in vain. For, Lord, we may not know all of the circumstances that led one from labor to the reward of being with you, but we do know that on a day like today, Lord, we remember the names, we remember their sacrifices, remember the lives that were touched because they lived. And because they lived, Lord, we know we cannot just go back to normal because we were touched by somebody along the way. And so, Lord, we ask that we have an opportunity, Lord, to be able to remember those who passed by this way, to honor those who gave a sacrifice, and to allow their living, Lord, to do something in our lives to make us better. For on this Memorial Day, Lord, we know to be absent in the present is to be present with you. But it does not make the midnight hours when we realize they're not here any easier. It does not make walking from place to place or going through holidays where we remember the cries, the, the smiles, the embrace of loved ones any easier. And so right now, Lord, we pray for anyone who has lost anybody, anyone, Lord, who is feeling mournful, anyone, Lord, who in the midnight hours, they take off the mask of smiles and take off the super safe smile and the dress of feeling like everything is all right, Lord, and they go into their prayer closets and they lament and worship to you, Lord. We pray for those, Lord, who are dealing with the pain and the heartache of knowing someone is not here. But Lord, equally as we are praying for them, Lord, we are rejoicing your name. For Lord, you gave them an opportunity to touch our lives. You gave us the gift of their presence in our lives. And for that, Lord, we want to simply say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see another day. For Lord, you knew us while we were in our mother's womb, and it means that there is something left for us to do. So Lord, order our steps in the way that we should go. Allow us to be able to move in ways, Lord, where your will will be done. And we will continue to lift our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that our help truly does come from you. Pray for this church, Lord, as we continue to figure out what it does it mean to not go back to normal in a post-pandemic world. As vaccines are coming out by the day, as outside opens up in more ways each and every day. Lord, order the steps of this church in the way that we should go, Lord, so that we can continue to be a refuge for those who need shelter, Lord, but that we are doing it in such a way that it is decency and in order, that it's safe for those to return, and that we do not simply try to go back to what things were like before this time, but that we reevaluate what is normal, reevaluate what does our future look like? And step into purpose with you. Guide our pastor in the way that he should go so that this church can continue to be a steeple in our community, Lord. As we think about what's going on across the street with open land, as we think about those who are without homes and without shelter, those without food, those without jobs, Lord, we simply want to continue to be a church that has the ability to provide for those in need while finding new ways to stay relevant in lives that we may not even know yet. For that, Lord, we offer this moment, we offer this time, in your most humble name, thank you for being God. Thank you for being a very real presence in our life. Thank you for continuing to bless us. We will remember the names that we've lost while also celebrating the life that we have. In your most humble name, we do pray. Let us all say, Ashe and Amen. It is my very real hope that this prayer finds you wherever you are and that you know that God hears and answers prayer. New Hope family and friends, we pray that your life, your experience, your morning, your moment, your evening and afternoon, whichever the case may be, has been blessed by this experience of worship today. We pray today that as you had opportunity to reflect on the, the life that God's called home from your circle of family or friendship, we pray today that as you remember uh, uh, veterans and individuals who've served this country with their lives, that together that our hearts have been encouraged and lifted by this wonderful experience in worship, prayer, word, and praise. We pray God's continued blessing over your life.
And we invite now that you might receive the benediction with us as we pray. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence on the throne in glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And we all say together, amen, amen, and amen. We thank God for you today. We invite you to take a moment to share some moments of fellowship with those in the comment section on the timeline, uh, on the telephone line as well, as we celebrate Christ together and new hope in Christ. We wish you a wonderful holiday weekend as you celebrate Memorial Day together. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you until we meet again. God bless you.